Hibernate 5419 introduced a dialect for CockroachDB, and I teamed up with Cockroach Labs to show you how to use it. Thanks to Cockroach Labs for sponsoring this video. Hi, I'm Tom Janssen, and I'm here to help you build efficient persistence layers with Hibernate. In this video, I will show you how to connect Hibernate with your CockroachDB and a few database specific things you should know before you implement your persistence layer. CockroachDB is an open source relational database designed to be highly scalable and reliable in distributed environments. It's available on AWS and Google Cloud or as an on premise installation. This makes it an interesting candidate for microservice based applications. If you want to give it a try or if you're already using it, I have great news for you. Since version 5.4.19, Hibernate ORM includes a CockroachDB dialect. It makes the database very easy to use and enables the CockroachDB team to support database specific features with Hibernate in the future. In older releases, you had to rely on CockroachDB's PostgreSQL compatibility and Hibernate's PostgreSQL dialect. That worked reasonably well, but a database specific dialect seems to be the better solution. Let's take a look at how to connect Hibernate with your CockroachDB and some database specific mapping and query recommendations. After you installed your database locally or set up an instance at one of the supported cloud providers, you need to configure Hibernate to connect to it. As explained earlier, CockroachDB is compatible with PostgreSQL. Due to that, you can use PostgreSQL's JDBC driver and connection information when defining your data source. The only CockroachDB specific part of your configuration is the dialect. You should set it to the CockroachDB dialect that fits the version of your database. Here you can see an example in which I used the user root and an empty password to connect to a CockroachDB single node cluster that runs in a Docker container on my local machine. In a production environment, you would use a similar configuration to connect to a multi node cluster with encrypted network communication and better user authentication. This configuration is the only CockroachDB specific thing you need to do to build a basic Hibernate based application with it. Hibernate's CockroachDB dialect handles all the database specific details. You can now use your standard entity mappings and queries to build your persistence layer. But as for all databases, you should know a few things to create an efficient persistence layer. But before we start, if you're new here and you want to learn how to create your entity mappings with ease, build incredible efficient persistence layers with Hibernate and Spring and all types of other Java persistence related stuff, subscribe and click the bell to get new videos every week. And also don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. By doing so, you are helping me to reach more people. When your application adds many records to the database, Hibernate's primary key generation strategy often becomes a performance critical mapping detail. Using JPA and Hibernate, you can define this strategy by annotating your primary key attribute with add generated value. The provided generation type enum specifies this strategy and you can choose between an auto incremented column and a sequence. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I always recommend using generation type sequence with Hibernate. It's the most efficient because Hibernate can split the generation of a new primary key value from the execution of the insert statement. Hibernate also provides proprietary optimizations to reduce the number of database interactions. Unfortunately, the CockroachDB documentation discourages the usage of sequences. Their standard indexing of sequential values isn't as efficient as it is for UUIDs. But their generation of UUIDs is based on a default value similar to an auto incremented column, and I couldn't use it with Hibernate. Your current best option is to use a database sequence and a hash sharded index on the primary key column. This index provides better performance than the standard one. Database views are a popular feature to reduce query complexity and restrict access to parts of your data. You can map them in the same way as you map a database table. As long as your Java class is not final, has the same name as your database view, and each attribute maps a column with the same name, you only need to annotate the class with addEntity and the primary key attribute with addID. Everything else gets handled by Hibernate automatically. But there's one crucial difference between a database view and a table. You often can change the data in a view. If that's the case for your view, you should tell Hibernate about it. You should annotate your entity class with add immutable 
use field-based access, and don't provide any setter methods. Using this mapping, you can use the author book view entity in your queries in the same way as any other entity. But Hibernate will ignore it in its dirty checks. Due to that, it will not try to insert, update, or remove any records in that view. Even if you use a database-specific dialect, JPQL and the Criteria API don't support all query features offered by your database. To use any of CockroachDB's more advanced feature, like window functions, you need to use a native SQL query. You can create a native SQL query by calling the createNativeQuery method on your entity manager and providing the SQL statement as a string. Hibernate sends the provided SQL statement to the database, so it's your responsibility to ensure that all RDBMS supported by your application can handle the provided statement. This makes it harder to support multiple RDBMS, but it also enables you to use all proprietary features supported by your database. Hibernate's dialect and PostgreSQL's JDBC driver enable you to use CockroachDB in the same way as any other database with Hibernate. You only need to configure a database-specific dialect and the connection URL to your database. In addition to this, you should pay special attention to your primary key mappings. Hibernate prefers sequence-based primary key values, which require a special index in your CockroachDB schema. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks again to Cockroach Labs for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about Hibernate, you should join the free member library. It gives you free access to a lot of member-only content, like a cheat sheet for this video, and an ebook about using native queries with JPA and Hibernate. I'll add the link to it to the video description below. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye!